Matthew, it's so good to see you today. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And um, I'm excited to talk to you about uh, BookTube today. Ami, it's uh, good, good to see you again as well. And we've both been on BookTube for quite a while now. I think three years, four years for me, something like that. And I think that's about the same for you. Is that correct? I think it's about two years for me. Two years. Yeah. And you made quite a lot of videos. I have about 100 videos. Is that a lot? 100 videos. I don't think it's a lot. How many do you have? I have over 500. Right. Yeah. Um, How do you feel about it? I feel great. You know, I feel I feel wonderful about it. Um, I didn't know what BookTube was when I started, but the idea of like making content of like talking about books of like, or just talking about not just books, but, you know, ideas, you know, was something that I've wanted to do since college. So like 12 years ago, you know, um, and it was always like, I try, I have, you know, 10 different blogs. Like I tried all sorts of different mediums, um, but to find uh, this medium, which, which uh, I, I just love it. I just love having this outlet, you know? Yeah, I love it. I love it too. When, when you think about like having a hundred videos, two, two questions. Do you think of it as a body of work? And are you proud of that body of work? I am. I, I am proud. There's about five videos, which I unlisted over the years, maybe a little more than five, but around, around five, five or seven. Um, Cause I felt like they weren't good enough to whatever random arbitrary standard, you know, it's all, it's all sure. totally sort of, sort of arbitrary and random. Um, they, I just felt like they, they were too boring or like self-indulgent and like not really, you know, uh, what I was aiming for, you know, but on the whole, I, I do feel proud, you know, with what I did. I, I, I certainly can cringe when I look back sometimes at older videos um, at, at things that maybe I thought were like trying to be funny and like I, now just like are super cringy or like, you know, the presentation being bad or organization being bad. And, and I, I could like feel uncomfortable, but, but at the same time, um, it's nothing that like would make me, uh, displeased really because it's it's just part of the process you know of, of trying yeah, to get better yeah. at this and, and just putting ideas out there and so at, at the end of the day I am pleased with it one, one of the main things that got me to go from thinking about making uh bit, like having a channel and making videos to actually doing it uh, for a long time I was preoccupied with this idea that I don't want to do it unless I'm going to make like, a good video like and and I'm not, uh, I don't have any background in presentations or uh, being on camera and like having that realization that it has to start bad or, yeah. or it's, it's not going to be that ideal version that I, that I would have in my head. And the only way that I'm going to get better is by doing the work, like tr- trudging through and making mistakes maybe feeling awkward, making bad videos. Um, it's, it's like the only road to improvement. Yeah. Um, and, and I think there's something to be said about an aesthetic, which is common within this corner of BookTube, which is the aesthetic of like being just transparently yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever that means. And like not you know, there's videos, there's, there's channels that are like so well produced and, and there's like, those are great too. Like, that's fine. But I think the aesthetic that I, I see myself going for, and I think other people in our community have sort of exemplified is like, it's just, just being totally transparently yourself, you know? Yeah. If, if, if you don't have an act, you, you just have to be as natural as you can be. Like, unless you have a professional bit that you're doing and, and want and want that like to, to, you know playing an act that whole middle ground is just awful like a mix between putting on a persona and being yourself it, just, it works so much better to have like to have yourself out in the open um, and just see how that works out yeah. Um, and I also feel like, of course, right now we're talking, but when, you, when you're making a video, you're just staring at the camera or staring at the wall. Um, 
there is a there's a strange sensation that at least for me anyway after a while i got i got as comfortable with the camera um or c closer to how i would talk to a friend and like the more comfortable i was the better i felt the videos were going yeah yeah I, have you had that experience totally i, I assume that must be a pretty universal experience like i remember yeah. in the beginning it was so hard it was so it felt so awkward to record a video um and 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 like i would try and fail i'd be like okay this is just not working i can't i can't talk right. um but over time like as as the medium i guess becomes more familiar you you begun you begin to be able to feel like you're talking to an audience you know which is um which is pretty cool yeah the difference between talking to the void and knowing that someone's watching just it just has a psychological effect and as far as like the changes go there's like self-improvement like we've been kind of talking about getting more comfortable but with your channel there have been um like stages of what you've been interested in the, the way that you've been um the way that you've been making videos and also the, the way that you've been presenting the things that you've been interested in um like you don't make too many book review videos and typically when you do you'll start with a thesis you'll, you'll have a theme or a topic that you want to place everything in like you had that video on 1984 and just specifically talked about surveillance uh, instead of a typical book review where you'd go through the you know main points of the plot this thing happens wh what you thought of it um, and it, it seems like that that's um, much more important to you to have some um, some central uh, thesis to talk about and like inquire about more than just the the story in the book um yeah. and I, i've seen that kind of develop in your channel yeah yeah i think that's really uh, astute um i appreciate you pointing that out because i think that's i think that's basically correct um it's yeah it's just a style that i i guess that i sort of hit upon where i tell myself like for whatever reason i don't feel like anyone cares what i think about a book you know like in part because I, i'm not such a great reader like i'm really i'm really not you know um when i look around at like this booktube community of like of like really serious readers uh I, I feel very inferior i feel like a bit of an imposter for sure um and so my my general like attitude is like no, no one cares what i think <laughs> you know if, if i liked it or not like they just don't care um <laughs> So, so I, yeah, I tried it to bring something else, you know, um, but when the, the I watch, first time, I, yeah, but when I watch other Go people's on. videos, when I watch other people's videos, I very much care, you know, what they, what they think of the video or the book. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I have like a, a different perspective as, as far as like how I make my videos, um, and it, it's similar in a way, because, um, most of my time talking about books off camera is talking about like my friend ben or my friend kevin uh and they're not really readers or the, the things that they read are so different if i'm reading an 18th century french novel i i'm not going to approach that discussion with they should know like whether or not it's a recommendation like mm -hmm. it really comes down to like is it going to be fun to talk about and have like an engaging discussion never mind that it came from a book never mind that it's 200 years old um I'm kind of getting over that part like especially if you're talking about classics it is a little ridiculous to say like i would recommend 1984 right <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and yeah so um i, I guess with, with the, like with that kind of feeling it does make that kind of feeling of not being good enough for whatever that is, it, it did pr produce uh, an interesting result in the way that you make videos. Yeah, there is one exception I could think of though on my channel, 
um, I have an early video where I, uh, the title, the title has changed over time. So I think that the current title is like the fatal flaw in Plato's Euthyphro or whatever, but it had other titles in the past, but basically it was a negative review of like Plato's <laughs> Euthyphro. It was like, like, you know, the Socratic dialogue that like, you know, I'm making the argument that it's like garbage, you know, and, <laughs> I, I, you know, of course, it's like it's like done tongue in cheek, like it's sort of done as like yeah. you know, to make a negative review of like a classic is sort of like an, you know, sort of like an absurd thing to do. Um, but, you know, even though it's like done sort of tongue in cheek, um, at the same time, it's like trying to draw out, you know, certain things that I think like really are true about, you know, the dialogue and the way it works. Yeah, I actually I've, I've seen that one. I, I haven't I still haven't watched it. Um, one of my favorite dialogues is Ion. Mm -hmm. you've read ion I, I don't remember what it was about but i'm sure i've read it if you can remind me maybe um it's it, it's a it's a socrates talking to this guy who claims to be like an expert in homer mm. he goes i know everything about homer you can ask me anything about homer <laughs> and, it, and socrates is like well what about other kinds of poetry and he goes no i don't know anything about any other kind of poetry just homer and he's like i know homer better than anybody else and Socrates is like, well, there's like sailing portions uh, in the Odyssey. So like, do you think you know more about the sailing portions than a sailor? <laughs> and the guy goes, well, I, I guess a sailor would know more about the sailing portions. And then he goes out about like soldiering and like all these different professions. And at the end of it, the guy has like this realization where he goes like, the one thing that I thought I was an expert on, like, I know, I don't, turns out I know nothing. <laughs> and then of course it ends with Socrates just going like, well, nice chatting. Right. <laughs> it's ruined this guy's life. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That, 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 that Socrates, yeah, go ahead. No, go. Socrates, I think is like, people don't like, they, they don't give enough like uh, attention to how much of like an asshole he was, like how, like completely unlikable a character he was in real life, you know, based yeah, on the dialogue. Stirring up trouble. Yeah. Stirring up trouble. Uh, every, you know, the sky is blue. Well, let's talk right. about it. He just like trolls people and, you know, <laughs> pisses them off. <laughs> so I think the first time I found your channel, I believe it was the Samuel John, the, um, the life of Samuel Johnson. So I was going to do this um, <clears throat> read along with Steve. I, th I think that's what we were doing. Uh, and I was going to like spend a whole month reading this book. And I don't even, I don't, maybe it just popped up, but your video popped up. And it was one of those things where like you were going to not just read the book and go, well, this is how it starts. We're up to the quarter portion of the book uh it, you you were doing like a book report that you're like reading in front of the class where there, there's like a to, like a topic you're like well what what is a biography what does james boswell have to say about biography and i started watching it and thankfully you mentioned at the beginning that you had read it before yeah um, I, I couldn't i couldn't have done it in one month uh for for a first time at all that have been yeah no chance and also like being so like in depth like, you know, ha having quotes and bookmarks. And um, it was the first video I, I saw of yours. I was just like, who, who is this guy? And I feel like you, at least with your channel name, which is like purposefully obscure, and you've changed it a couple of times. Like, th th this is the improvement of what yeah. it was before. That's correct. And I, I, I think that you like that, that it's like hard, that it would be difficult to find your channel. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, well, yeah, I, I've gotten a lot of grief over my channel name and channel names. Um, and, and for good reason. It um, runs against the grain. Yeah. Like to, anyone would say you want it to be kind of catchy, snappy, something that you can easily search something that you know like i've been watching your videos for like a year i still don't even know what it is right it's like ami there's a number <laughs> you have parent parenthesis is in the in the title twice yeah so i would say this i there's there's probably there's room to improve but the aesthetic <laughs> that that i like the aesthetic that i'm going for 
however ineffectually um is 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 long i like long titles uh for whatever reason and like sort of like compound titles you know like just two random examples uh off the top of my head is like um blood meridian or the evening redness in the west like i love that cormac mccarthy like has that or you know subtitle um even moby dick is uh is like moby dick or the whale yeah i love like sort of these compound titles um and i like for 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 what i'm for my aesthetic what i'm going for i like i like randomness um okay. i want like a, a title that like if you google nothing else is going to show up um not because of like I want to be found easily because that, that's not what I'm going for. Not like, you know, if they Google me, they'll find me. But like, I want it to just like be a combination of characters or words <laughs> that like don't exist on the internet anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's sort of what I'm, what I'm looking for. Okay. Well, I guess that's as good of an explanation as you can come <laughs> up with. <laughs> um, and as far as like having a mix, there, there is a variety in the, in the channel. We talked about that a little bit not to mention the exercise videos. But recently, you're having this terrific interview series. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I, so, I recently, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I imagine, at least in part with um, the, the effects of the pandemic and having Zoom chats come up and having that become a much easier, uh, well-known more established way of communicating but you were doing that beforehand anyway you had some earlier interviews it, it was like kind of when zoom took off that these videos of yours took off so uh, they're always uh, like having conversations that generate really interesting discussions on very specific topics um so how do you how do you find these people and uh, is is it really just that th these are things that are interesting you or um or that you're curious about like things that you don't know about and want to know more so so in the past it's been sort of through relationships um i've i've done i've done zoom chats with you you know which is a relationship that is very important to me, you know, um, having gotten to know you and have those Zoom chats. I've zoom, done Zoom chats with other booktubers, uh, including Steve Donahue. Um, I, I did Zoom chats with, with a few different friends or, you know, people in my, in my sort of social circle uh, who are expertise, you know, experts in, in what they do. Um, so, like, you know, a friend of a friend uh, is, you know, an expert on, like, the Israeli-Palestine conflict. So I talk with him. A friend of a friend uh, is is a rabbi and a philosopher who's like written you know books of poetry and like books on Martin Heidegger. I interviewed him, um, you know things like that. Um, recently, I I decided to like try to lean in to this interviewing uh, thing, um, and so in addition to these like relationship interviews, which is you know this is sort of an example of it, and I intend to sort of continue. I, I started seeking out authors, um, which I think is a really fun exercise. Um, so, so for the most part, like if I'm on a tight, tight schedule to read a book, uh, I, I do combination audiobook and reading. Um, so that, that's how I'm able to like, you know, cram it in as best that I can. Um, and, and, and you know, the, the trade-off being that like, there's less retention, but there's like more volume in that kind of a uh, process. <laughs> um, and I've, um, I've honestly, so I, I sent out, so yeah, so what I do is I go to like new releases. This is my, I'll tell you my process. I go to new releases. Yeah. I look at all the books, anything that looks like vaguely interesting, like very cast a wide net. I reach out to the author, um, but sometimes it's hard to reach out, like hard to find a mode. Uh, I've done like private messages on Twitter. Like sometimes I can find their website, and have like a contact form. A bunch of times I've like tweeted at authors and my hit rate is abysmal. <laughs> I, I, I probably sent out like, 50 or so of these messages and have like yeah. gotten responses on like four um, okay so it's like a super low hit rate um but that said you know i'm happy with those four like one one video sure. is up uh i have two more scheduled for next week you know and i'm really excited about those so you know like four is, is a great place to start as far as i'm concerned i think i think four 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 i think four is a great four out of 50 for just being basically a stranger um and that like that well that number can only go up 
So I think that, I mean, it's a really good place to start. And it's, it's, it's a body of work, like you mentioned before, like if, if you reach out to someone, to someone else, you could have a byline, like, you know, I've had interviews with these other people and it's kind of builds up credibility. Um, I mean, it's a portfolio. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, that's, that's so definitely the goal. For the people that you're talking to, how much research preparation goes into it? Like what, what's below the screen? <laughs> As far, like, do, do you have a list of questions, like a real, like numbered one to 10 list? questions sort of as as i read the book or listen to the book i'm i'm taking notes on you know things that are jumping out at me um and and i'm constantly organizing those notes and they're sort of like forming questions you know as i go forward um and yeah i mean i i'm trying to like i i at, as i'm engaging in this exercise i'm finding this practice of like formulating questions to be really fun like a really interesting creative project um i i assume you probably have some experience with that to some extent i'm sure most people do you know just thinking of yeah. questions to ask someone um uh in a zoom call whatever um and and yeah like trying to find like the maximum um question where like I, i'm trying to like find this this boundary between like between like the content that's in the book and like Hmm, I don't know how to put it. I, I'm struggling. I, may, I maybe have to stop and think to figure out how to formulate this. But like, I'm trying to find questions that are, I want the, 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 the author to be like, basically the world leading expert on this question. But I also want it to be hard for the author, you know, at the same time, like I'm trying to walk this line, like really, That's like, great. like it's there, it's in their wheelhouse. But it's like a question that they ne haven't necessarily like thought of in this way yet, to whatever extent that's possible. You know, so th those are like really fun puzzles to sort of, you know, chew on. So uh, has it given a different kind of pleasure to your reading to have this exercise of kind of reading critically in a very certain way? Um, has it added enjoyment or? Um, yeah. Made it worse? <laughs> it's, it's different. It's very, very different. Um, you know, I, I, there was a turning point. Like, no, none of my viewers would ever know this. And so I'll tell you, like, this is behind the scenes. No, no one would ever, ever have any way of knowing this. Um, there was, like, a turning point of, like, a few days where I made a decision. And I said, I'm not going to make another video essay yet. I mean, maybe at some point in the future. But I'm going to put video essays on hold. And now I'm going to, like, focus on author interviews. And it happens to be, this is, like, totally random. This, this was a turning point. This is a wonderful book. Great, great book. Took it out of my library. Um, I read it. I devoured it quickly. And I got so much out of it. Um, and I was thinking, okay, video essay. Like, like what's my video going to be about this book? And I thought, and I thought, and I thought. And I, and I came up with, like, a lot of good content. Um, and I guess what I'm getting at, though, my point is, like, that's one paradigm of reading. It's like, it's like, like right. you, pick, you pick the book. I, I picked that book because, like, that was on a topic that fascinated me. And I devoured right. it because it was, like, it was like a... a delicious to read in a way i mean it's a dark book so it's a weird adjective to word but use in that context but it was like a compelling compelling read um whereas here it's like very different it's like a very different model um the book uh like the dope or, or this other book that you know hopefully i'll be talking with the author next week um about like the history of uh settle, settler colonialism like our books that i would definitely not have picked up on my own you know and right. i'm reading with a more critical eye, like I'm reading for like questions that might be able to challenge the author to some extent, you know, so it's a very different experience. And what I, what I guess what I'm seeing in like this immediate juxtaposition is that, you know, in a sense, they, they both have their merits. They're like certainly different. And right now I'm like really enjoying this like new mode of reading. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's leading to debate. I go, an interactive conversation with like as you put it like the expert on the book which is different like generating debate is a different thought process than if you're making a video kind of holding court like you need to just keep everybody's you want to keep everybody's attention and have it be entertaining and also being thought-provoking but 
uh, it doesn't have the, the, the quickness, like that quick exchange of ideas um, that you that you that you need to have in a conversation, like a back and forth isn't just about funny banter if you're talking about a book. It has to be substantive. And so you're responsible for creating substantive conversation. Yeah, but it's, it's a two-player game also, you know, yeah. uh, which is very different. Um, and I, I think this is maybe what you were saying, or maybe I, I sort of am, I'm like picking up on something you said and, and sort of using it as like a jumping off point. I'm not sure. But um, I, I, think, I think you said this. I think I'm repeating what you said, but I'm maybe putting my own words. Like if I'm doing a solo video about a book, you described it as like holding court, I think. Like there's like this performative, like I, I need to grab the viewer's attention in a particular way, which is a challenge. Whereas um, in a dialogue, what I'm doing is like, I'm trying to create some tension. Like I'm trying to, I, I, don't, I don't debate, right? So I, ne I never debate. I don't, I, don't, I don't see myself as debating anyone. Um, I, and ultimately I want authors to like feel comfortable and like feel like, you know, they're gonna have a good experience talking to me. Um, but at the same time, I do want to like make them think. You know, right. I do want to ask some questions that like, that's going to like really, you know, in, in a sense, press them um, to most of the most of the interview series that I've seen. You do a lot of listening. Right. Which, which is a huge part of it, like ha having ha having a, a good question, an open end question or whatever. Um, and then just having that air to breathe, like listening to what the person says and then critically like engaging with that response not not moving on to question number two um as if they didn't say anything right that's um, that's the goal yeah and, and that's what makes it hard but to be on the ball in that way you know because you actually to, have to be listening yeah you can't be preparing your next question and, right. and you have to be listening and there's different levels of listening. I mean, anyone can listen, but you have to be listening critically. Like you have to be listening with a certain like um, openness to push back on what you're hearing, you know? Um, and, and, and that's what makes it, I think, so, so fun and also hard. Like I consider it, you know, a, a super, it's like a challenge, um, which I enjoy. So we, we talked about pride, like having uh, feeling proud of these videos. Are you, are you finding the interview series to be more fulfilling um, or fulfilling in a different way than the video essays? Because you, you said you kind of threw down the gauntlet um, and the, the way that you expressed that made it seem like it was a very important thing for you to do. So now, now, you, now you have a, a handful, half a dozen or more um, what do you think about this kind of body of work compared to the video essays? So, yeah, I, I guess part of what, what caused me to like throw down that gauntlet and make that transition. Um, I wonder, I wonder how you would respond to this or other people would respond to this. I, I, I was like, I don't know. I, I imagine making this video essay of like this book that I loved. And I, I think back at all the videos that I made and, and I, I am, I'm really happy with what I've done and I'm happy with like a lot of it, but it felt like, it felt narcissistic in a way. I, I don't know. That's not, maybe not the right word to use. Uh, it felt, it felt sort of like self. Like self-indulgent? Self-indulgent to some extent. Um, not that that's a problem. Not that like I regret any of the videos I've ever made because I certainly don't. I, I'm happy with the videos that I made. Um, but I guess, yeah, I was looking for a change, I guess. Like I sort of maybe got tired in some sense of that medium and, and like the, you know, maybe, yeah, I, I, I don't really have the words to express what that means exactly or why I got tired of it. But to, I guess to answer your question of like, am I, am I finding this to be fulfilling? Am I finding this to be satisfying? Um, am I proud of this body of work? Um, I would say yes. Like I would say that um, this new approach I have found um, to sort of give new like excitement or like a, uh, uh, a synonym for excitement uh, to this to this project, this YouTube project. Okay, so um, a, a part part of making these, we, we've been kind of talking about the nuts and bolts of 
video making, the personal experience, um, some about engagement, but one of, one of the one of the biggest elements of the whole thing is the, um, the, the term that you, we always hear about the booktube community or um, our little corner of booktube, things like that. And I, I know for you, you are very much involved with um, uh, either, either commenters or other booktubers ha having um, interactions and forming relationships in a way that makes those um, terms real, you know, ha having relationships with these people. And so I'm curious what your thoughts are um, as far as having an interview series, do you think there's a place for that in the booktube community, or do you think that it's separate somehow? Yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. Before I, before I answer that question head on, I'll just say that like the booktube community is extremely important to me. Um, what, I don't tell most people in real life that I like have a YouTube channel, but if ever I do, They'll be like, like, why? Why do you have a YouTube channel? And my answer is always because of the community. And like, that's the truth, you know? Um, and I'm not going to mention names right now because like I would maybe leave someone out or whatever, but I could easily lift off five, six people that I feel like I've really became friendly with, you know, through this project. Um, and that's wonderful, you know? Um, so that's sort of like an introduction to my answer to your question. Um, and, and it's important to me that like, that I have that, that I gained that. And, and even if like no one, even if I never make another video that my friends like would want to watch, let's say, cause like, let's say like, you know, let's say the interview is like a different genre than the standard video sure. of booktube. Um, I feel like I'd still have those friendships, you know, like sure. to some extent, um, which I'm, which, which is very important to me. Um, now the question you asked about like, does the, does, is the community aspect um, can that be reconciled with like this medium of like doing interviews? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I think it's a great question. Um, I mean, one way to do it is, is, is the Zoom chats, which of course you and I are doing now and we've done in the past and have been like a staple, I think, of this community. And those certainly do strengthen the community aspect. Um, mm -hmm. To the extent that I'm doing author interviews, um, th there is a sense in which I feel like maybe I am leaving, you know, the BookTube community to some extent by doing that. Um, which, the, the, the author, the author interviews, why do you yeah. think that? Well, I just mean like when, when I think of booktube, when I think of this community of booktube, I think of more of like the solo turning on the camera and talking about the book that you're, what you're reading. Right. Yeah. And I see myself as sort of breaking from that, at least for now, maybe just temporarily, whatever, in this experimental project that I'm working on. Um, and so I understood your question to tell me if I maybe misunderstood your question, but I understood your question. Like, how does that? fit in with the community aspect like is the community aspect still present maybe in that new uh mode of, of making videos was that sort of what you were asking or did i misunderstand no that, that's pretty much what i was saying um but I, I actually wasn't thinking about the author ones i was thinking about um you know b being much more comfortable um making videos um on topics like um having a discussion with a QAnon conspiracy right. therapist, uh, therapist uh, street epistemology, uh, demonology, um, th things like that, which are clearly separated um, from anything bookish, book, book related, um, th that's kind of a venturing off into something else. And um, th that's sort of what I meant. Like, is, is there a place for that in the booktube community? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and that question makes, it's a, it's a great question. And I think the answer is sort of the same. We're like, um, I, I want, I want both. I want to have my cake and eat it too. You know, I, I, I made, I, I made I great. Think, yeah. I think the answer is that it, it's a clear wholehearted yes, that it, it, it all, it all pulls in together. I think. Yeah. Well, I think, I think friendships are friendships, you know, connections are connections. Like I, I Voxer with, with a lot of like wonderful people in this community, you know? And again, like these people that I Voxer with in the booktube community might not care at all 
about anything I do with QAnon or street epistemology, you know, but like those, it doesn't matter because like connections are still connections. And I think I could, you know, in the future, make new connections. I, I think um, I got a parallel is like for, for, for the videos that I make um, and having a channel as much as I'm conscious of it, it has no bearing on my reading taste. And so if, if I'm interested in reading uh, an 18th century French book, or if I want to have fun reading a comic book, and that's what I want to talk about, it's what's going on in my life, it's what I'm interested in, it's, it's what I'm doing, and that's what I'm talking about. And it yeah. just seems very similar. Or your artwork, um, for example. Or the yeah, ha having yeah. paint, you know, having painting videos, um, like at, at, at a certain point, you, you 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 form personal relationships, but th there's also um, like uh, the, the the bond that you can have with an audience. Like you kind of build up credit or you, you kind of hope someone might um watch a video that they might not otherwise have watched because they kind of like you yeah um and like you're the person that are pulling people into different um conversations that they might not have heard before it, it's very similar to how booktube already operates that's a great perspective. That's not the perspective that I was like using, but I think that's like the correct perspective to take for sure. Um, you know, it's the same thing. I, I, I put out like, um, yeah, like, like I've always felt comfortable putting out a sort of a random video, you know, and I, I thought of it as like, you know, trolling my audience to some extent. Um, <laughs> so I guess, you know, cause like so different from like what they're expecting. Um, but 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 yeah you're right because ultimately what this is about like what we're doing here and what makes it like meaningful is that it's just it's just like honest about what we're interested in like what's on our intellectual palette plate at that particular moment you know yeah and that, that's how i see it i i've uh i've watched so many of the videos you put up that i wouldn't have watched otherwise like it would have no interest uh, like the, the the street epistemology, um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't glance at that. I, I wouldn't take a second glance at that if it was just on a YouTube feed. I go like epistemology, like why, why do I want to listen to that? <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm the better for it, um, or or like the the demonology, like um, it's a really interesting subject, but. I've, for for someone that has an audience um and like for me being a part of that audience i'm immediately interested mm. and, and it's 100 percent mutual because you know you've turned me on to so many different books that i would never would have had any interest in um at all you know certain your your, your reading of the classics or dirty french authors or you know all sorts of things um that on on i you know uh because they're recommendations from you and they're things that you know, are interesting to you, they, they become interesting to me, you know? So that's, that's sort of the way I think this whole community works. Yeah. It's, it's, that's how it works. Yeah. You just ha have this kind of like a, a big open marketplace of ideas where everyone's talking about all sorts of interesting things and um, you make strong connections or weak connections with different people and it pulls you in different directions. Yeah. So do you want to announce that you're leaving book two? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a funny, that's a great question. The answer is I don't want to make that announcement. Um, that, that's not a serious question. Yeah, but I, I know, I know. But um, I, I have agonized over that question. So I mean, not, not whether or not to make the announcement, but whether or not I feel like I am. Because like, I, you know, just to like give a little more color to my story. Like I read All God's Children. It's a very dark book. I, I loved it. It's about violence, and American violence, basically crime in America. A very dark book. The story of the Bosque family. It's about as dark a book as you can get. And it was so interesting to me. And and I felt like it was it was so rich for material. Um, but But then like 
like as the video was developing, like for whatever reason, I can't put my finger on it. I just felt like I'm putting this on hold, you know? And so in a way, um, there, there is a piece of that, which is like, I'm leaving booktube, you know? Um, but of course, but of course, I mean, I think author interviews, you know, uh, are certainly adjacent to booktube. And I think that I might, I might come back and eventually make a video about that book. So it's nothing, nothing final. So one of the first things I brought up was how you felt about your body of work as a whole. And um, at some point for my, like for, for my channel, I started thinking about ha having a body of uh, videos and it really helped me um, not hold any, like not hold the newest video to, up to a certain pedestal. Like I, I would want to make it and do the best that I can, but you can kind of get uh, roped into yourself that like th th this is going to be the critical moment where it's just one part of all the videos that you're going to make. Um, what, what do you think about that? Like, I, I know what you're saying, because I, what I could imagine is you're going to have a long series of interview videos. And then one day that there's going to be a book that you read and you're going to go, I really want to make a, a review video on this. And you're going to go like, well, we have to pull all the stops, like hold our horses. Like I haven't done this in months. Everybody's going to be waiting. It's going to be a big deal. Is that? Yeah, I, you know what? Honestly, this is this conversation has been so helpful and enlightening, because your 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 questions are causing me to think through things that I never really thought before. So, part of why I'm probably putting essays on hold is because of what you just described, which is like this uh, feeling like a need to sort of meet a certain standard, potentially like an increasingly um, you know, higher standard, which is again, like very arbitrary and subjective and, you know, however I'm internally judging videos of the past, but yeah, that you, your question that you just asked, like made me think along these lines. Um, and I think your approach is the healthy approach, right? Your, your approach is to think of as like a body of work. I mean, every video is like a, a piece of the puzzle and to not, not get caught up in that judgment. And I think that that's the correct approach. Um, which I could probably, it, it, it's, yeah, benefit. It's, it's hard when you're doing it. Right. Um, like for, for, uh, an experience that I've gone through is um, I'm much more comfortable making videos when I'm making them more often. Um, and like, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't plan anything. So I'll either have an idea in my head or finish a book decide to make a video, turn it on. And there's like a muscle. So there, there, there's some easing into being able to speak freely with no um, response mechanism, like they just start talking. And uh, what, one of the best times that I had making videos was um, at the very beginning of the year, I did uh, like a library tour series. And so uh, I guess you can see it, like there's like these shelves and I was just gonna um, do that library tour. You pull it off and put, pull a book out each, uh, for each shelf. And I gave myself um, like this challenge where I was gonna do one a day. And it was kind of a breeze. Like, I don't know how good the videos are, but I, I, I would turn it on and one, one take, go through it next day, no problem. Um, and like after like, you know, day 20, 25, there's no concern at all. Like it's just like really, really easy. And then I will have times where um, for whatever reason, like a week and a half goes by or th there's a period of time where the anxiety that I have is, um, as quickly as I can, I want to get to the point where it's easy to talk to the camera. And uh, you know, 20 times starting off the first 10 seconds and having to hit the stop button, like 
you get so frazzled. I like I just put everything away, like because I, I don't want to be aggravated in front of the camera. And so it's like this weird, like push and pull. Like I don't have enough to talk about every day. Like I couldn't just hit the camera, hit the record button. And just start talking you know i have to have something to say uh but the longer there are between me having something to say it makes it harder for me to say it that's funny <laughs> and and anyone who makes videos i'm sure is going to relate to that experience of like turning on the camera and trying and failing and being like like beating yourself up like i certainly can re- i can relate to that uh for sure <laughs> uh yeah, being tough. unable to to get it you know to to get it to come out correctly and just be like oh forget it <laughs> you know that happens I've, I've had periods where that will happen a lot or like it'll be 20 minutes or something where i can't get third i can't get 10 seconds um so like I'll, I'll look at my photo gallery and it's just like this <laughs> wallpaper of like 10 second long thumbnails you know like go through and delete them all <laughs> So relatable. But if, if I can get like through the first minute, then I'm fine. Mm-hmm. It, it's always like just saying like, hello, my name is Matthew. I'm reading this book. Like the, the part that should be the easy part, like screwing up or not, just not, you know, being maybe overly critical or unhappy with it. And that stress level goes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it just gets worse. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you watch your analytics? Do you check your analytics? Um, I, I I look at them. I, I don't obsess over it or anything, but it's interesting to look at. Uh, do you? Do, do, I I okay. do. Yeah. Do, do you ever get like surprised by like a video that you thought would do really well, like doesn't do well, or vice versa? Um, I had um. So for for. I, maybe a week or so ago, like within the month, I had this huge spike and it was um, a video on the secret history by Procopius. And he, yeah, he was- Yeah, I saw it, yeah. Okay. Um, and like, it's just one of those weird things where like, it, ha- it had like a hundred views in a day. Like it just like shot up and then you just look at it and go, well, what happened? <laughs> what? <you know? laughs> um, and yeah, like uh, it's, it's hard to say. Cause like the, my, my most viewed video is the idiot mm-hmm. by Dostoevsky. And um, it was a really early video. It, it like I had, maybe made 10 videos at that point i think less than that um and it wasn't great like i still didn't know how i wanted to be talking about books like how how much do you explain how much of the story do you tell how much do you digress um all those kinds of things where i'm much happier about the videos i make today than i am of that video And I don't, I don't understand why that one, it has like 20,000 views or something. And I, I like, I don't see why that would be the case. I'm happy about it, I guess. Yeah. I'll, I'll reveal one more secret, I guess. I wonder, I, I'm debating if I should even reveal this very, it's relatively personal as far as things that I said, maybe uh, if there's a, if there's <laughs> We're, we're way at the end of the video. Yeah. No one's watching. No one's this watching point. this far. That's very reassuring. <laughs> another piece, another piece in the puzzle of why of why I I decided not to make another video essay. Like I always put video essays on hold. Another piece of the puzzle is I I made a video, which for me, for whatever reason, it felt like I think I felt like it was a very good, and B, I felt like it was you were in disappointed. Some ways, yeah, in some ways, it was like the most personal. Not not personal to like my private life because I didn't talk about myself, but like in terms of like my my real interest, like my real literary interest. Like it, it was it was it was my most the last video essay I did is called the uh, the Mourner's Kaddish, and it's about um, the poetry of Yehuda Amichai, who's like a very important poet to me, and it's about like you know Jewish history and Jewish memory 
and the Holocaust and like things that are like like really like important in like my intellectual life and, and like, the poetry is very meaningful to me and like the video just like did terribly <laughs> compared to like my other videos and I was sort of like you know what like let's take a break <laughs> the so you know there's di different kinds of videos that you can make so there, there's like the book review videos you can have tags the, the book hauls um one of the things that I've learned um, is those book review videos. Like if, if you're going to ha have something where you like are specifically talking about an, an author or work or whatever, they have legs. And so they, they can just steadily grow. Whereas like you, you know, you can do a tag tomorrow, wh whatever is um, the popular tag at the moment have a big big spike of views um and then no one's ever going to watch it again right so the, 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 those ones and i i know what you're saying like it, you're you're invested like this is really good people are going to like it and then no one just watches it <laughs> it's, it's disappointing it sounds so like narcissistic or conceited when i like when i hear it repeated back to me you know like like who cares right because no. ultimately like who cares but you no, know it's not, guess... it's not narcissistic um so we, we spent an hour now talking about how there's these relationships and people know you and then they trust your opinion and then this is a betrayal <laughs> like, you've built up all this credit and you go well now i'm going to talk about something and then collectively everyone decides not to listen is hurtful and that's not narcissistic <laughs> i hear you I, I hear you it's it's complicated i mean because yeah. i mean like like what, what how do we define a lot of people i mean to be honest like uh, more than 100 people saw that video like 150 people ish which is a lot of people that's pretty good yeah it's a lot of people you know um like right before that i had a video titled the most difficult book i ever read and and that has like almost 600 views that has like you know way more because the title is like clickbait almost you know what i'm saying i think i think maybe you're being narcissistic i am <laughs> i am i am i am i i hear it because like it's just it's, it's it's very arbitrary i guess i, I thought you were going to say like the number was like two no not that low <laughs> but i guess i guess it was that juxtaposition it was the juxtaposition between like a clickbait title that got a ton of views and, and something that like i felt was like 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 sincere and authentic and like did much worse you know and like that juxtaposition like like sort of stung a little bit. Yeah, that, that's like Thomas Mann's The Magic Mountain and then his child, Joseph and his brothers. Mm, right, right. I know I know exactly what you're talking about because I've seen your videos on both those videos. So yeah, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Um, but of course, yeah, of course, at the end of the day, like, like, like no one gives a shit like about my, you know, interest in some random Israeli poet like no one can and that's that's like legitimate like they shouldn't like you know we have different life experiences like we have different interests like like no one no one needs to care about the fact that like this is an important you know body of work to me like that that's fine <laughs> well I mean that's one way of putting it no one has a strong opinion one way or one way or another mm -hmm. like that's no one would be kinder. interested like you know yeah do you want to link that below sure yeah I'll link it below that way. Uh, I I'm feeling self-conscious now. I feel like I revealed a lot about myself in this conversation. But that's okay. It's good to feel a little bit self-conscious sometimes. It means I'm, think, I'm like you know, pushing by the way, I, I think that's the mark of a good interview. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say, I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I agree. Because I'm pulling all of this out of you. That's the goal. To really, yeah, really create, you know, that kind of uh, exposure, which is what you're doing. Yeah, you want to create like a comfortable bubble. <laughs> Person starts talking they don't even realize the bubbles popped before it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, uh, you did. Uh, this is great. This, is, this has been a lot of fun. You know, the, be I, the best conversations are the ones that are like mutually uh, enjoyable. And this has been like super, super enjoyable for me. This has been terrific. Yeah. And I actually, I was looking, we've had a handful of um, Zoom chats like, like that have been on um, like on our channels. Because uh, I think we talked about uh, Tostoevsky, we talked about Thomas Mann, we talked about uh, Borges. Um, 
I think we did something else also. Uh, yeah, I think I think I've had more Zoom chats with you than anybody else. I think I had two with Steve. Yeah, and I'm I'm happy. We should have many more. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Do you want to wrap up? Yeah. Okay. Um, Matthew, this has been so much fun, and uh, and I always I always love uh, love talking to you, and um, and we'll do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. I had a great time. This is a really fun conversation.